tell you what, this guy had a home uh, as a walk-on. He had a home at a lot of schools. He could have gone at, at scholarship straight out of high school, out of uh, you know Liberty Christian High School. But instead, he wanted to be an Oklahoma State Cowboy. So he uh, took his two stars to Stillwater, and by the time it was over, uh, he was he was four star or better. You know what? As few guys that make it in the NFL, you pretty much have to be a a retro five star to make it in the NFL, and that's what he did as a rookie free agent. Talking about former Oklahoma State Cowboy center Brad Lundblade joins us now. I reached out to you because I loved your tweet this weekend about stars. <laughs> well, thanks, Robert. Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, you know, I just uh, you know I saw that story. For those who who hadn't seen it, you know. Uh, there was a fake prospect that was created uh, on a Twitter account, and I guess it tricked uh, tricked some of the recruiting websites into rating him as like a four star, I think. Um, and so I just thought the story was hilarious that uh, you know some of these recruiting sites have been tricked by this uh, re- fake recruit that didn't even exist. Uh, so it, it made me feel a little bit better about my my two star rating back in high school. It made me think that. Maybe they don't put as much work into those ratings as they say they do. So it made me feel a little bit better. You know what? Brad Lundblade with us, and, and he's, uh, you know, Cincinnati Bengals. We're going to get into that and the NFL stuff. But I did, he did put a message out there on Twitter about, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the kid that, that rivals got fooled on. It was a Twitter created account, like Brad just said. And because rivals ranked him, he automatically, 247 Sports has a composite, which takes all the services. And so he automatically went into that. So 247, without actually making the mistake, ended up having him on their composite because rivals ranked him. And, and you know what, Brad, that's the greatest fear of any journalist is to get catfished, you know, and, and get fooled. And that's why, I mean, I've been called before. You know, I've had fans call me. Somebody say, hey, this guy just got an offer from Oklahoma State. He's really good and all that. You need to write something up on him. And my rule is, unless I can find tape of a kid on Huddle, unless I can watch him, I'm not going to write about him. Because that's that's one sure way not to get fooled, is to to see the goods. If, if you, well, How can you write about a player? And this has always killed me about these rankings. How can guys rank players if you've never seen the player play? Right. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, and that's why, uh, you know, I think that that's a big reason why the whole star ratings and, and ranking high school kids is uh, kind of bogus just because uh, I think a lot of the time they don't even put a whole lot of effort, if any effort, into really what they rank these kids as. Um and, you know, my tweet wasn't trying to disrespect anybody that works for those uh, no. those websites or anything like that. But but I do, you know, I do have a, a little bit of an issue with them uh, kind of putting a cap on high school kids and, and putting a cap on their potential based off of uh, really not very much research. Um, and, and I know I, I felt that way when I was in high school. Uh, like you said earlier, I was a two-star recruit. And, uh, you know, I, I always felt like uh, that that wasn't fair because – Although some of these guys did see me at some camps and stuff like that, I felt like, you know, they were putting a cap or they were trying to put a cap on me um, based off of really not, not even seeing a lot of me. And, and I felt like it was unfair. And so, like I said, I, I wasn't trying to disrespect anybody, but, you know, I want to encourage kids out there that, you know, the stars really don't matter. At the end of the day, it's about, it's about your attitude. It's about the work that you put in. And uh, I think they're, you know, I'm an example and there've been plenty of guys like Blake Jarwin and, James Washington, I think, was a two- or three-star. You know, it's it's not about how many stars you have. It's not about what these recruiting writers say about you. It's about the work that you put in uh, whenever you actually do get on campus. Well, and, and sometimes, to put a cap on this and move on, sometimes it's where you go to school. And, and in your case, you went to a private school, and those schools don't get as much attention as the, the 6A and the 5A, you know, schools in the state of Texas. And, you know, I mean, hey, I've, I've gone to Class A schools and seen great players. I mean, that, it doesn't matter. So, uh, again, understand where you're coming from. Now I know where you're coming from. You're coming from being a, uh, a year in the National Football League with the Cincinnati Bengals, I guess, initially on the practice squad and got pulled up. And I tell you what, one of the great pictures of this season is also on your Twitter account. 
you know, uh, two former two former walk-ons, and it's a picture of you at, down in Arlington with uh, Blake Jarwin, and uh, you know, shaking hands after the game, and that's 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 pretty cool. And you got to be really proud of what Blake did this year. He's he's stepping out now, and a lot of people feel like he's one of the better tight ends in the NFL, at least one of the better young tight ends. Yeah, definitely. He had a he had an awesome season. Um, I I was able to keep up with him a little bit. Uh, we played against him in the preseason. That's what that picture was from. Um, right. And uh, so it's yeah, it's awesome to see him doing well. Um, his story is kind of similar to mine, being a walk on, and uh, just to see him having the success uh, that he's having. I mean, I, I knew going into the season that he would have more of an opportunity uh, with Jason Witten retiring. I knew that you know, that would give him a great chance to kind of step into that role. And uh, he did a great job for them this year. So I was really excited for him. You came into Cincinnati, like I said, as a rookie free agent. Uh, you had already been and during the spring uh, or early summer. You had been at some other mini camps. Uh, you got to Cincinnati. I know they had, dra- uh, they had drafted one of the best centers in the draft. You kind of hit it off with him. He gets hurt. Kind of take us through how – all of a sudden, you know, you know, we're hearing all these great things out of Cincinnati about Brad Lundblade and how excited they are. I knew you would sell people on your uh, versatility, being able to play not only center but also play either guard position. You're smart. You can learn things. Uh, take us through how this all came about for you in Cincinnati. Sure. Well, um, yeah, so – Initially, after the draft, I, I wasn't drafted. Uh, I signed a contract with the Seattle Seahawks. Um, I was really excited about it. Uh, went up to Seattle, went through mini camp, uh, and ended up getting released shortly after. Uh, and so that was kind of a surprise to me. Um, and, uh, you know, it was tough because I, I was just coming off the high of signing my first NFL contract and feeling like, you know, I'd finally made it to, you know, accomplishing my dreams in the NFL. And then I get released shortly after. Uh, and so that was kind of crazy. And so whenever I got released from Seattle, uh, it was kind of a scramble to try and, uh, you know, between me and my agent trying to find a, a place where I could even just get a tryout. Um, and so we ended up, uh, you know, he was making phone calls all that week after I got released and ended up uh, getting a tryout for me in Cincinnati. Uh, so I flew up to Cincinnati a couple days after getting released from Seattle uh, for a mini camp tryout and uh, ended up doing pretty well uh, and uh, got signed uh, right after the mini camp. And so that's kind of how I ended up in Cincinnati. Uh, and like you said, uh, Billy Price, who was first round draft pick out of Ohio state, he was our starting center this past year. Uh, that's when he and I had first met was at that mini camp and uh, really hit it off. He helped me out a lot. Um, and, you know, we were, we were kind of, in the same situation you know we both played center we were both trying to learn a brand new playbook brand new system all that stuff and so we kind of bonded through that experience and uh, we were kind of able to help each other out through that that uh, weekend for the mini camp and so uh, after I got signed uh, went through OTAs went through training camp all that stuff um, and uh, really the whole time I, you know I, I obviously in the NFL uh, you know it's, it's kind of crazy you're always you're always competing for your job all the time, uh, especially for a guy like me. I was undrafted, so, you know, you're always competing, and I learned that very early on in Seattle uh, after getting released. And so, you know, my whole thing was just trying to uh, to do my job as, as best as I could uh, and take advantage of every opportunity that I got. So I felt like I was able to do that throughout the preseason and uh, throughout the season. And, uh, you know, I, I just tried to focus on doing my job and, and uh, being the very best that I could for the team. Now, the other thing you're going through, and, and just about everybody in their career in the NFL goes through this at some point in time, coaching change. And it's funny because uh, I actually I actually know your new head coach pretty well. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, he was uh, – oh, yeah. He was uh, a product of uh, Norman. Uh, I'm trying to think which of the middle schools he was in down there. But um, uh, in high school, when he was at Norman High – I know my my son Zach played against him. He had a has a younger brother, Press, who's the quarterback coach for the Philadelphia Eagles, and he's the same age as, as Zach. He's like 31 years old. He's the quarterback coach for the Eagles. Of course, Zach was the quarterback coach out in L.A. for the Rams. Uh, and then here's the other thing: Jim Turner, who I kind of know a little bit, 
uh, the offensive line coach at A&M gets hired. He goes up there. He'll be your offensive line coach. Your offensive line coach your last year in college, Josh Henson, goes to to uh, right. Texas A&M. And then Charlie Dickey, who was at Kansas State, and I don't know if you know any of those guys that played at K-State, but Cody Whitehair, who's with the Bears now, the center there, his uncle is our boss at the Cowboy Radio Network, so I've known Cody. It, it, it was it's It's been crazy around here, but i got to think it's been crazy for you because – you got to get used to a new head coach. You got to learn that new offensive line coach, and obviously, like you said, your jobs—you're always competing for your job. So you got you got to get in there and and bow up now because it's a whole new whole new group of coaches in Cincinnati. Right. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for for the new staff. I haven't had a chance to meet anybody yet because I've been down in Dallas training, but uh, I'm excited. I, I'll head back up to Cincinnati at the beginning of April uh, for. OTAs, and so I'm excited to get to work with the new staff. And and like you like you talked about, it it, it was kind of crazy, you know, because um, obviously I heard the the announcement of uh, us hiring Zach Taylor, uh, and then shortly thereafter, probably one or two days later, uh, he announced that Jim Turner was going to come be our offensive line coach. And so uh, I'm excited to get to work with those guys. But yeah, it was, it was crazy that then after uh, Jim Turner left A and M, they went and snatched Coach Henson from OSU. And so. Um, you know, I was sad to see Coach Henson go. I, I really like Coach Henson. I think he's a great coach. Um, but I am really excited about Coach Dickey coming uh, to OSU. Uh, I I actually knew Coach Dickey a little bit in high school. Uh, he he recruited me a little bit. Um, I, I made I think two visits up to Manhattan whenever I was in high school. Um, and I I met. Uh, I'm actually still decent friends with uh, Dalton Reisner who just finished his career at, yeah. at Kansas State he was yeah. their starting right tackle and now he'll he'll be a pretty high draft pick probably in this year's draft um, so we we still keep up a little bit and so um, I, I know some guys over at K-State and I've, I've heard good reports about Coach Dickey so I'm excited uh, like I said I'm, I was really sad to see Coach Henson go um, you know especially with him being a former player uh, I felt like you know, Stillwater's home for him, and I know he loved being at OSU, but uh, it sounded like he got a great opportunity at, at Texas A&M, so I'm excited for him. Uh, but I'm also excited for uh, for Coach uh, Dickey to come in, and like I said, I've heard great reports about him, and I'm excited to see what he's going to do with our guys. Yeah, it's funny. We had Cody uh, Whitehair on the show just last Monday, a week ago, and uh, we had him on during the noon hour because – uh, he was working out. He goes, Robert, I can come on, but I can't come on till afternoon because I got I got work out in the morning. I knew you were going to throw this in somewhere that you're down in the Dallas area working out. That's the other thing people would be surprised about. I think uh, in the NFL, uh, I don't know how much uh, when the season was over when you left Cincinnati, how much time did you take off before you actually worked out again? Uh, if any, I, think I, I took probably about three weeks, two or three weeks off, Um, you know, and, and for me, I I felt like I needed to take some time off uh, really just physically uh, because really your rookie year is a grind. You go straight, you play your senior season in college and then you, you end, you play the bowl game. And then for me, right after the bowl game, it was only one or two days later before I was starting to train for my pro day and training for the East West shrine game and, and all that stuff. And so it's, I, I really, I had really been going nonstop for about a year and a half uh, without having any break, and so I just felt like, you know, physically I was kind of worn down. I felt like I needed a break, so uh, I took about three weeks and uh, was able to relax, do a little bit of traveling. Uh, I went out to Arkansas to visit my sister who lives out there, uh, did some fun stuff out there. I spent two days in LA at a an NFLPA uh, leadership event. Uh, I actually saw uh, Mason and Chris Lacey out there, uh, so it was good to see those guys. And then I went to Clearwater Beach in Florida for a week and uh, spent some time on the beach. So it was great to get away. Uh, like I said, I felt like my body needed a break. Um, and it was great just to kind of relax and recover after the season and uh, you know get a little bit of time away. I, I felt really good. And now I've been back training for about a month. And, uh, you know, I feel, feel, I feel, I feel good. Uh, and it was, it was a much needed break for sure. 
No, that's that's good. Yeah, during the season, because yeah, the, the picture with Blake and the uh, Jarwin in the in the uh, exhibition season, preseason, and then you're in a division uh, with uh, yeah, it almost feels like it's Big Twelve up there because uh, there's a quarterback just north of you that was making some noise that we saw way too much of in when you were in college, uh, right? You know, in, in Baker Mayfield, then like you said, Mason and and uh, James. They're over there in, in Pittsburgh. So you get plenty of chance to, to see some. And even there in your own locker room, there's some former Big 12 players. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, there's some guys you know up and around that uh, that AFC North division. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it was great to see Mason James uh, this season. And, uh, you know, it's fun to see all the guys around the league that you know um, making plays. I mean, like we already talked about Jarwin, uh, Marcel had a great season with the Raiders. Um, you know, Chris Carson is doing great things with the Seahawks. Uh, and then James in Pittsburgh. I mean, it's, it's just great to see guys from across the league. Uh, you know, we really had a special class. Um, those last couple, you know, probably my junior and senior year at OSU, we, we had some pretty special guys. So it's fun to see those guys around the league. And, you know, whenever we get a chance to cross paths, it's always fun. Saturday is an interesting day, day before a game in the NFL where there's, you know, there's some walkthroughs and meetings and all that. And I guess everything I've heard from former players is in between or on flights, going to road games, whatever, guys are tuning into the college game and there's a lot of trash talking and bragging going on or, or uh, you know, or, or capitulation if your team, your college team didn't do that good. How fun are Saturdays when – when everybody starts talking a little bit college. Oh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, that's, that's pretty much all you hear on Saturdays. Uh, it's just a lot of trash talk between guys, uh, whether it's, you know, me with other guys from the Big 12 or, you know, we have guys from colleges all over. So it's, it's fun. Uh, that's a big part of uh, Saturdays in the NFL. You know, guys love to, to watch their schools. They love to talk trash with other guys. Um, I know – uh, during Bedlam week, there was a lot of trash talk between Joe Mixon and Jordan Evans and I, uh, and so that was fun. Um, unfortunately, I didn't didn't get the uh, the upper hand on that one, but uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, guys guys love to root for their schools, and it's it's fun whenever you whenever you're in a locker room with guys who who are, who are from all different places. Uh, it's, it's fun to talk some trash and, and kind of have fun with it. Those guys couldn't brag too much after Bedlam. That was a tight fit in Norman. Uh, yeah, and, and as you watch this season go on, I mean, obviously, you know Johnny Wilson well. I thought Johnny played well this year, and he's become a leader on that offensive line. I think he picked up a, a lot from you and Zach and and uh, the guys that, that came before him. Uh, but, man, what a weird year. I mean, you know, as an alum looking at it from long distance, God, there were some highs, some big highs, and then there were some some tough lows. Yeah, it was a it was a confusing season for sure. Um, you know, it, it it was crazy at times watching to think that the same team that beat Texas and West Virginia was the same team that lost to Baylor and Kansas State. Uh, it was just really weird to watch. Um, you know, the the highs were awesome. I mean the Texas game and the West Virginia game and, and even the Bedlam game, even though we weren't able to win. I mean, those three games, they, they played awesome. I mean, if you watch those three games, you would think that they could beat any team in the country. Um, and then, you know, you watch the Baylor game or the Kansas state game and it's just like, man, how is this even the same team? So I don't know. It was, it was a confusing season. Uh, but, you know, I, I think at the end of the year, uh, looking back on it, you could say that, you know, we finished with with a winning record. We we had a great bowl win against a good Missouri team, uh, and so even though it was a confusing year, some people might say it was a disappointment. Um, I, I had a blast watching those guys. I was really happy for uh, Taylor Cornelius and, and Britton Abbott, two of my former roommates, um, and uh, you know just all the seniors who who you know even though it was kind of an up and down season, they they finished out the right way and they, they had a good bowl win, and uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. So I enjoyed it. Last thing with Brad Lundblade now with the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are an interesting organization. I know we talked about the coaching change, but their front office still has ties to to the Browns. And and Paul Brown is one of the, you know, he's like 
you know, Vince Lombardi or, or in the college game, like, a, 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 you know, any of the great coaches, you know, that have, that have gone through, you know, through the game, like uh, Bear Bryant at Alabama. Uh, the fact that, that that Cincinnati Bengals, they do have the ties to the Brown family. I, I think, you don't you have a woman, either general or assistant general manager? Yes, yeah, Katie uh, Katie yeah. Blackburn, uh, who's yeah. Paul Brown's uh, grand granddaughter, Mike Brown's daughter. Granddaughter, exactly. So, what's I mean, what's that franchise been like? To me, the Bengals are one of those like family franchises, and and a lot of people say those are they're great to play for. But you've been there for a year now. Uh, if if Cincinnati ended up being your home throughout your career in the NFL, is that good? I think it is. I mean, I, I've enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I think that whenever you have uh, kind of a family business type uh, atmosphere, I, I kind of like that feeling. You know, I think um, the Brown family is great. You know, they they care about the Bengals. Uh, they they love the the franchise. I mean, it's it's been in their family for, I mean, since they were started. So I mean, I, it's it's yeah. great, and um, I, I think they do a great job of kind of having that family feel and um I, i've really enjoyed it so um I, I think it's great yeah brad i appreciate you joining us let us know if you get up here to to stillwater to uh to visit and i know it's gonna ramp up you got a couple more months here and then they'll get the draft going and then all the mini camps and all that uh, crank up again now when are you supposed to go back to cincinnati um, I haven't heard officially, but I, I believe it'll be, I believe we'll start workouts on April 1st. Okay. All right. Well, Hey, uh, again, good luck with, uh, everything and, and, uh, really proud of what you, uh, what you did this year. And like you said, you were part of an extremely special class. Uh, and that was proven again by how many guys in the league, how's Crabtree doing? He's doing good. Um, I I actually was just talking to him the other day. We're gonna he's he's in the DFW area too, uh, so we're gonna try and get together right. sometime. We haven't been able to yet, but uh, he's good. He he uh, he had a little knee injury back during training camp right. with the Chargers, um, and so he's just been rehabbing that and uh, trying to get healthy. But uh, I, I know he's progressing. And uh, last time I talked to him, it sounded like he was making some good progress. He's starting to get healthy, and uh, I think he's looking forward to getting back out in LA and, and getting back with the organization. So he's, he's doing well. Yeah. I knew they, they liked him. He was playing a bunch in the preseason and, and until that injury, it was looking good for him. So uh, we'll wish the best for him as well, but Hey, uh, good luck. And let us know if you get around here around Stillwater at any time. Will do. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on Robert. All right. Hey, congratulations, Brad, Brad Lundblade uh, with the Cincinnati Bengals and, and uh, so proud of what uh, what he did, accomplished. That is a hard way to get in the league as a rookie free agent. And he battled and found his way into the National Football League, which is uh, pretty cool.